Hi guys, I'm going to show you how to get started using Laserfish, uh, just an introduction to how the program works and what you can use it for and how to get started with scanning and printing things into Laserfish, along with some helpful hints, things that I wish that I had known when I started using Laserfish. So the first thing that you want to do is open up the Laserfish client, which is an orange box with a big white L in it. And what you're going to see looks like this. And the first time that you log in, you won't have this Tamu Klar available repository. We're going to attach it right now. And from then on, you'll have this repository available to you here. So click attach. And up here in this box, you want to choose network repository. And then in the Laserfish server blank, type in cis-lf-rio2.tamu.edu. And then down here, check the Use SSL Connection checkbox. And then in the repository name, click the drop down list and choose TAMU CLAR and click Attach. And then here you want to choose Password Authentication and then put in your NetID at TAMU.edu. And you have to add the at TAMU.edu on the end. And then put in your NetID password. So that brings you into Laserfish. And again, you won't have to do that every time. From then on, you'll just be able to click on tamu-clar and just type in your password. So this is what Laserfish looks like when you log in. Um, you may not see all the same things I see. You'll have access to different things. But um, from here, you can open up a folder that you have access to. For example, I have access to the Business Office folder. And within a folder that you have access to, you can create new folders, um, you can save files in here. It's just like a Windows file structure, basically. And you can set it up however you want, whatever makes the most sense for your office. In our office, we created something that's similar to the filing cabinets that we used to have, but um, you can do whatever works for you. And we also created an inbox and we gave everyone in the office an inbox, which is a handy way for things to get sorted. Um, you know, that's where we can scan things in, or if somebody's turning something into us, it just goes straight into our inbox. So uh, if you want to create a new folder, you just click on this little new folder button up here with a little sparkle on it, and it creates a new folder. Or if you want to delete that folder, you can click delete, and it will go away. Now, another really handy thing in Laserfish is that you can copy and paste a folder structure. So this is handy if you have, say, a set of folders that you want to create many times. Like, for example, in the business office, we have one folder for each account. But then within that account, we have the same six folders that are in every account file. You might have the same thing with, you know, say, faculty records or something like that. You can copy and paste those same six folders, even if they have stuff in them. So let's say we have a brand new account. I can just go into a folder that has the folders that I want, copy, and then go to the folder I want to put them in, and you can paste folders only. So even though in the previous folder there were a bunch of files in here, if I go to the same folder in the new one that I just created, they're not there. So that's a really handy tool. Another thing that I think is handy is um, if there's a folder that you want to be able to go directly to, you can create a shortcut on your desktop. Like for example, I frequently want to get to my inbox, so I can create a shortcut to that by just dragging my inbox out onto the desktop. And you can do this with as many folders as you want. I mean, if I wanted to have a shortcut to the pro card receipts, I can click and drag that onto the desktop. And then the next time I want to log into Laserfish, instead of going to this regular Laserfish shortcut, I'll go to the shortcut to my inbox. And it takes me straight to that folder. I don't have to drill down to it. So you can create as many shortcuts as you want. I should note that creating shortcuts only works for folders. If you drag a document out into the desktop, it's going to export it to a PDF. So that's a handy thing to know also in case you ever need to create a PDF. You can just drag it onto your desktop and it creates a nice looking PDF.
So let's start looking at how to get things into Laserfish. The thing you'll probably be doing a lot, especially at first, is scanning. So I'll show you how to set up a scanner. The first thing you want to do is click on this scan button here. And it's going to come up with a message the first time you click that button that asks you if you want to put it in standard mode or basic mode or something like that. Whichever option is already selected is the right one. So just check do not show me this again and hit OK. And then I'm going to show you some steps that will go through the first time that you scan, but then they'll be set forever that way so you don't have to mess with it again. Um, the next thing that's going to come up is this choose scan source box. And you want to choose Twain and check the show scan source setup box and hit OK. And then it's going to ask you to choose your scanner. And if you have a scanner like we use in the business office, it's going to be the Kodak scanner not the WIA, but the Kodak, and hit OK. And then click on this OCR settings button. OCR is optical character recognition, which basically means that the scanner is going to try to read all of the text that's on your document that you're scanning. Scanning things is really just creating a picture of the thing, but one of the awesome things about Laserfish is that it also knows what your document says, which makes it really easy to search for things later on. So we want the scanner to OCR every document as it comes in. So you want to check this perform OCR on new images, make sure it says accuracy, and hit OK. And then click on the enhancements button and choose rotate image and hit OK. And then in the color drop down list, it'll be black and white by default, but I like to change it to color because things just look nicer that way. So those are all settings that will save themselves and you won't ever have to mess with them again. The one that you will have to change every time you scan something is the paper source. Feeder means one-sided, duplex means two-sided, and automatic doesn't work. So every time you're scanning something, you'll need to change it depending on whether you're scanning a one-sided thing or a two-sided thing. So uh, once you're ready to scan, you'll put your papers face down in the scanner and click the Start Scanning button. And it takes a second to pull them up here. But you can see the pages of my document are here and it's rotated them to the right direction. So over here in the document properties pane, you can give the document a name. And then once you're done with that, you just click done and it's gonna save the thing that you scanned into the folder that you were in when you clicked the scan button. So here it is. And there is my document. So there are some different panes that you can choose to see when you open up a Laserfish document. These are the ones that I like. Uh, this is the thumbnails over here that shows you all the pages that are in your document. The image, which is what your piece of paper looks like. And then over here, the text pane shows you what Laserfish thinks the document actually says. So if you're searching for something, that's the text that it's looking at right there. And you can see it's not necessarily 100% right. It's got some stuff that looks like gibberish here, but for the most part, it's really accurate and it's really helpful for when you're searching. And then down here is the annotations pane. Um, if there had been any notes or highlighting or anything added to this document, that would show up here. Another great way to get things into Laserfish, and the thing that you'll use more often uh, the longer that you use Laserfish, is Laserfish Snapshot, which is basically a printer that allows you to print things directly to Laserfish. So I'll show you how to set that up right now. First thing you want to do is click on Start, and then All Programs, and then scroll down to the Laserfish folder, and then Snapshot, and then Snapshot Configuration. So when you first pull this up, it's probably going to have this repository login window that it brings up. And you'll type in the same thing that we typed in earlier uh, when attaching the repository. You'll type in cis-lf-rio2.tamu.edu. And then you'll check the use SSL connection checkbox. And then the repository selection, you can click on the drop down list. And if it doesn't come up with a list, you can just type in, in all caps, tamu-clar. And then you want to choose login to the repository using this user account. 
And again, you'll put in your net ID at tamu.edu and your net ID password. And then hit OK. And then here we've got um, some settings that we want to take a look at. This section here is the default document properties. That's what it's going to try to name everything that you print and where it's going to try to save it. So by default, it's going to try to name it whatever the print job name is. And that's what I recommend leaving it as. Um, you're probably going to name it something different every time. So there's no sense in having a default name really. Um, but if you want to have a default name, you can. All these things over here are tokens, which are dynamic things that will change every time you print something. Like you could add the date onto the end of it or whatever. And then here is where it's going to try to save everything that you print. I have it set to print to my inbox by default. Wherever you want to save it, you can choose by clicking on the three little dots right here and choosing your folder out of the folder structure. So once you've done that, just hit OK. And then on the connection information, you want to click change and make sure that it chooses this user account and your net ID password. And then click preferences and under file formats, it says TIFF by default, but I chose JPEG because that means that it's going to print in color. And I just think that's nicer to look at. So hit OK. And then you can hit OK again. So next time you have an electronic document that you want to put into LaserFish, like say an email or a website or a PDF, something like that, instead of printing it out and scanning it in, you can just print it directly to LaserFish. So let's say I want to put this email into LaserFish. I'll just go to print. And then I'll click on the drop down list of printers and choose LaserFish snapshot and then click print. And it's going to bring up this little dialog box and I can choose to give it a name and where I want to save it. So I'm just going to name this email from Clint. And I want it to go into my inbox, but if I wanted to choose a different location for it, I could click on the three little dots and bring up the folder structure and choose a different folder and hit OK. And then hit OK again. And if we go to LaserFish, there it is looking very nice and all the text is going to be exactly accurate because when Outlook printed the document it also sent along exactly what the email said. Okay so a few other things that I thought would be helpful for you to know. By default LaserFish does this thing where if you draw a box on the image that you're looking at it's going to zoom in to that box. I find that really annoying. If you find that annoying too you can go to tools and then options and then click on view and then general and where it says when part of an image is selected uncheck this zoom to selected region by default checkbox and hit okay and then i can draw a box around the thing and it just draws a box around it if you ever do want it to zoom in when you draw the box you just hit control and draw the box and it zooms in again another thing that you might want to take a look at is also under the tools and options and if you click on search by default, it's going to do fuzzy search, which is where it brings up things that are close to the thing that you are searching for, but not quite, and which is helpful if you think that there might be a misspelled word or something like that. It's really great because it's going to bring up things that if, as long as it's less than 25% different from what you're searching for, it will still bring up the result. For me, that's a problem because I'm often searching for account numbers and account numbers are very similar. So if I'm searching for 512401, I don't want 512402 to also come up, but it would if I was using fuzzy search. So um, it's up to you to decide whether you think you would like that or not. Um, but if you want to turn it off, you can do it right there and hit OK. Um, some other things that you might want to know about. Let's look at a document in LaserFish. And uh, there are some things that you can do to add annotations to your document, things like highlighting and redacting and adding notes. So if you want to add a, a note to a document, you can hit Control Shift X on your keyboard and click, and then it will add a little text box. And you can type whatever you want in there. And once you click out of it, it's going to show a nice neat little box and you can click on it and resize it if you want to. And then once you save the document, that will show up in the annotations list down here. So it'll show 
what it is and the fact that I created it. Now you can also highlight things by clicking on this little highlight button and then you just draw a box around whatever you want to highlight. And you can see here it highlighted it on the picture but it also highlighted it in the text over here. You can also redact things. Um, so if you want to protect some information like a social security number or something like that, you can draw a box around whatever you want to redact. And you can see you can still see through it here because you and anyone who has your same level of access will be able to see through that redaction here in LaserFish, but anyone who has a lower level of access than you do won't be able to see through it. So there may be someone who you want to be able to see this email, but you don't want them to be able to see the subject line. Then we could set their permission so that they couldn't see through that redaction. Also, if you were to print this out or if you were to um, export it to a PDF, it would be completely blacked out. Um, let me show you an example of that. And once I save the changes here, I'll just drag this onto the desktop to create a PDF. And you can see it's blacked out. Another thing you might want to do is uh, put a stamp on your document. And to do that, you can click on Add Stamp. And then uh, you want to click here on Add. And if you can click import from file if you have a picture of a stamp you want to put on here. But more often, I think the create custom stamp will be more useful to you. And you can give your stamp a name. Like, say I want to create a received date stamp. I'll just name it received date. And then here, I'm going to put the text that I want the stamp to say. So I want it to say received. And then I want it to put in the date that I'm stamping the thing. So if you click on this little carrot to the side here, it's got some tokens that you can choose from. And I want date. So that means that it's going to automatically fill in whatever day I'm stamping the thing. Uh, you can choose a different font over here if you want. You can change the font size. You can change the width of the border of the stamp. Um, all sorts of options available to you over here. And then hit OK. And then you can change the color over here. And then when you're ready to use it, just hit Apply Stamp. And click on the page, and it puts the stamp there for you. And then if you want to use it again in the future, you just click on this little drop down arrow here and you can choose your stamp from your list and stamp it again. And again, if you want to take a stamp off of the page, you just click on it and hit delete and it will delete it. So we want to save this to save all our changes to the document. If you've ever made changes to a document and you try to close it without saving it, it's going to ask you if you want to save the changes. So you don't need to worry about remembering to save it. Another thing that I think it's good to be aware of is the text that LaserFish associates with whatever your document is, because the text is what's really powerful for searching and finding things later on. So the more accurate it is, the better. So the good thing about things like emails or Word documents or websites, um, when you print them to LaserFish, the text is going to be really accurate because the program is also is not only sending a picture of the document, but it's also sending the text that's associated with it. So LaserFish knows exactly what this email says. But that's not always the case with everything that you save into LaserFish or print to LaserFish. For example, here is something that I printed to LaserFish from a PDF. And if you look at the text pane here, it says this page contains no text. So sometimes PDFs, depending on how they're how the PDF was created, Acrobat doesn't have the text to send over to LaserFish and say, hey, this is what this document says. So um, if I were to search for PAB annual fee for fiscal year 2016, I wouldn't find it in my search because LaserFish doesn't know that that's what this document says. It just knows this is a picture of a piece of paper. So um, to fix that, I'm going to click on the OCR button up here. So this is going to perform that OCR process, the reading of the text right now. So it's asking you which pages would you like to OCR. And by default, it's going to say all image pages without text, which is fine here because we just want to read the text on the pages that don't have any, which is this one. So we're going to hit OK. And over here, it has read the document and now it sees what the text says. And um, that PAB annual fee for fiscal year 2016 does show up in the text. So that's what we want to see. 
So another thing to look out for is sometimes the text that the program sends over to LaserFish is wrong. Like for example, so this is another PDF that I printed to LaserFish and uh, Acrobat did send some text over to LaserFish and say, hey, this is what this document says. But as you can see over here, it's not accurate. It's just gibberish. So in this case, LaserFish thinks that there's text associated with this page, but it's obviously wrong. So I want to click this OCR button again. And this time I'm going to choose that I want to OCR all image pages because if I were to choose image pages without text, it wouldn't OCR any of them because it thinks that there's text on them, but we want to redo it all. So I'm going to choose all image pages and hit OK. And now you can see the text over here is much more accurate. So that's gonna be handy if I'm trying to search for this document later on. So another thing that's really handy is these columns up here. You can right click on any of these columns and choose which columns you wanna see. Um, I think by default it has like volume name and maybe template name, but especially right at first, you're not gonna be using templates, so there's no point in having that on there. And the volume name is gonna be the same for all your documents, so why bother having that on there? Um, the, the fields that I find really useful are the created by and last modified by, and also creation date and last modified date. Um, another thing I like is the page count that tells you how many pages are in the document. So if you know you're looking for a big document, you know, it's, it's easy to spot ones that have more pages. Another thing I like is this OCR pages column. So that tells me really quickly, um, if there, if I have a document in my folder that isn't OCR, um, then I can spot it really quickly. You can choose whatever columns you like, and there are a ton of different options that you can choose from. So feel free to click around in there and, and add and remove the things that you want. Uh, so that's, that is pretty much it for my introductory helpful hints. I hope that, that you find that useful. Uh, if you have any questions about anything or if there's anything else that you'd like me to cover, please feel free to get in touch at uh, faith at tamu.edu or 845-3871. Thanks.